Good day, everyone. So today we've got Radostina and myself to present to you the seven common chart shapes um, in astrology. And how are you, Radostina? Hi, Donny. I'm very excited about this recording um, and I'm happy that I meet you again. Virtually, it's been a while since we talked. <laughs> yeah, I know. I missed you. <laughs> I think the last video that we did regarding Venus, there's people are like always talking about when are we going to c collaborate again? Yeah, I know people. Yeah, because people love our <laughs> dynamics together. So I think like you know we're just giving what the people want, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. so today we are talking about the patterns, planetary patterns. Yes, and there's seven common ones that we have. Um, to Jones. According to Edmund E. Jones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so let, let me just start my presentation. And okay, so today we are talking about the seven common chart shapes. And why are we talking about this? For me personally, I actually, um, in my readings, I, uh, I talk about the chart shape of a person uh, when I start off reading with a client, because this will set the tone um, in, rec in, in helping to identify what are the inclinations or what actually impels uh, the, in the, the individual or client to, uh, to be the way that he or she is, how he or she actually uses his energy, where are the uh, important, important ways in which energy is directed, Mm -hmm. And it can also help to uncover um, overall life attitudes. Yeah, and it's uh, it's uh, especially interesting when when we can see the chart shape clearly because sometimes there might be variation. Sometimes the planets might be nearly in the chart shape, but when it's a um, very like uh, very well outlined, mm. it's um, stronger. Yes, and right here we've got seven chart shapes in which we'll cover today. Um, I'll cover three and Radostina will cover three and we both will come together and cover the seventh chart shape, which is splash over here, which is the hardest one to actually define because everything is so spread out. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have chosen an example for the splash to show that uh it's it's not like it's not easier just to say okay the planet's all over the place and you can say this is a splash oh yeah <laughs> i just want to uh tell the audience that no chart shape is better than another and it's just how we use it each one has its own pluses and own minuses and it's just how you um bring into consciousness those things that's within you that it will help you to navigate your way to um, your path to self-identity. Basically, we, we are all using our, we are trying, astrology, I find that is really trying to tell us how do we make milk the most lemonade out of lemons <laughs> for ourselves. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, this, is, yeah. this is this is always true when we're talking about uh, positions in the chart in general. That nothing is good or bad, negative or positive. It's just how we use it and how conscious we are. Yeah, true. So let's just start off with um, the first chart shape, and um, I'll start off with the bow shape first. And on the top left hand corner will be the ideal bow shape in which all the planets are actually occupying about half of the, um, um, of the chart, around 180 degrees. And within those 180 degrees, um, it will be preferable, although I've seen uh, deviations from that, that um, between planets within the 180 degree range, Ideally, there's no more than 60 degree gaps in between any planets because otherwise it will function as like a hole in a bowl. <laughs> like something is leaking and the 
the energy of the bowl will not be as um, powerful as it is. I know of a lot of people in my life that has this particular uh, chart shape. <laughs> so what I actually typed in here in this slide, uh, some are actually from my observations. So when we talk about a bowl chart shape, the key words and uh, phrases for people who have this chart pattern is that they are highly focused. And the main thing about a bowl shaped chart is that there is an innate need or search for self-containment. They are also naturally very much of a resourceful kind of people. And when I see someone with a bow chart shape, right, it reminds me of that axis of Taurus and Scorpio <laughs> because they are the axis naturally associated with resource, um, employment and gathering. But it's a fixed sign axis. And so there's, there's like a stubbornness that comes along with that as well. If someone has a bow chart shape, um, since all the planets are located within 180 degrees of a chart, this means that the other half is empty. And what happens is that the person with a bow chart shape will find that the other half of my life is missing. <laughs> and he or she will actually reach out, be it via attracting a person or circumstance, or a situation in order to connect with what's missing out there. That's interesting. Mm. Is there anybody uh, popular that we know with such shape? Uh, I have one which uh, is actually a Kennedy. Caroline Kennedy to be exact. Uh, when I actually look at her, her natal chart, it still falls into a bow chart shape, although um, it's slightly more than 180 degrees if we consider the boundary planets. Hers would be Uranus and the moon. And maybe it's uh, important to mention here that um, we are talking about shapes, but uh, we include only planets, correct? We don't include the nodes, we don't include um, Chiron or anything else. For me, I include Sun to Pluto without nodes and Chiron. How about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. And um, in this case, for certain chart shapes, there's a term that's called the leading planet, and there's a thing that's called the trailing planet. So the leading planet is um, over here in this particular example, starts, in a, uh, starts with Uranus as the leading planet. And how do I actually identify that? Uh, I actually count clockwise against the zodiac wheel until I hit the first part of the chart pattern. In her case, it will be Uranus. And the very last planet over here will be the uh, the moon, which is the trailing planet in Aquarius. So when we actually talk about a bow shaped chart personality, they usually take life very seriously. And there's almost like a, a mission-based way of conducting their life, which is very evident in her case for Caroline Kennedy. And if we actually look at her leading planet, which is Uranus in the eighth house, um, Uranus is what dramatic surprises and crises in her life, Uranus in the eighth. Eighth house is also about potential kind of um, things that's outside of her control. And in her life, she has experienced the assassination of her father and her uncle. And she is the one that keeps all this um, or contain all this um, energy within herself to, to pull her inner resources up to deal with those things. And the trailing planet is the moon, 
in the sign of Aquarius. So if we actually look at the, it's almost like the first planet is Uranus, then it goes by zodiacal sign order. That's how they process the whole experience in their life. And so the very last planet here is really about emotional detachment, very much moon and Aquarius energy. That's how she can prevent her, prevent her own life from falling apart. Not the easiest chart, I must say, um, but then this, this is very much indicative of how she contains her own life and, and, and build her own inner resources by being emotionally attached. There are certain uh, aspect patterns that's very much indicative or found commonly within the bow chart shape. Um, a T-square is very common in which there's an opposition. And ideally, there'll be a planet that, square, that squares both um, planets that define the brim of the bowl. And for her, it's actually Mars. And Mars in the sign of Scorpio is very intuitive. So uh, the way that she will use her bowl shape is also to develop and use her intuition and instincts uh, in terms of emotionally driven lessons or actions. Um, but it can also be that it can create somewhat of a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but some someone who's very much uh, came here onto earth to develop her intuition and her actions will actually reflect that. Yeah. And she's one of the first to actually quit uh, the administration when Trump was, uh, you know, when the news of Trump actually came in. <laughs> This can be very much that Uranus, Moon, and, and Mars energy is like, okay, he's in, I'm out, you know, <laughs> just very quickly like that. So for the next chart shape, uh, we'll talk about a more concentrated energy, which is called the bundle or cluster. And this is defined by all the planets being squished uh, within one third, that means within 120 degrees of the zodiac wheel or five consecutive houses within the chart. And I've also put here that this, this is actually what I find the rarest of all these seven common chart sheets that's, that we're gonna discuss. Cause for a bundle and cluster to happen, stelliums need to be part of the equation. So you will find that people who have bundle or cluster chart sheet naturally they're there's going to be easily one or two or even three stelliums over here as, uh, as indicated by this diagram. When someone has a bundle or cluster chart shape, this shows a specialist kind of energy and they have very defined and there's almost like a very tunnel vision focus into what they are set up to do in their lives a lot of concentration within them, a lot of persistence and commitment as well. And they are very much the expert within a field that they choose to master in. There's a chance to really master um, a field of work as defined by the planets or, uh, or the houses that's occupied in their chart. But being so single-minded, and being so determined can also make them miss out on other parts of their life. So, um, because there'll be a lot of houses which are empty in their chart, even more than the bowl. <laughs> so there can be kind of like an obsessive and addictive personality that may come with that because of the presence of uh, stelliums being common for a bundle or cluster chart shape. Or pattern and the narrow scope of focus can mean that they are very much they can potentially be stuck in a way of thinking as well i was uh, i was going to say uh, at some point that while you were talking about 
um, being the person who has a bundle or a cluster is a specialist. And I was going to say um, that it's maybe a good time to promote myself because I have a cluster in my chart. <laughs> but then you said single mind and I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm joking. The, the, the quality <laughs> of being like, like a specialist, it is the plus, but it's also, it can bring its potential like issues as well. Because you have yeah, a very specific personal point of view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and that really defines... Okay, like depending what signs are occupied in your particular bundle or cluster, you'll be so heavily focused in those areas whereby the rest of it just seem alien to you. And um, there may be a very specific way in how you relate to people mm -hmm. um, as well, which can be plus or minus because you have your own specific audience, that's for sure. And it's very, uh, this is really uh, important to highlight uh, that it's um, very interesting to look at different bundle charts mm. uh, and see how people act according to the to the houses that, that they occupy because mine are all in the, like in the public sector, if I may say, it's all on top okay. of my chart and somebody else who has their planets on the bottom or um, like under the horizon, mm. um, they wouldn't, they would be totally the opposite person to me, probably. And again, there would be something that is very similar between us because of this focus and because of this determination and because of this um, stubbornness. <laughs> well, I mean, if everything is above the horizon, you'll be more of like an objective or extroverted way of life that you're always in the public eye and you'll be taking into consideration the public opinion that's coming to you. Mm -hmm. When everything is inverted, everything's underneath the horizon, that means underneath the ascendant descendant line, it's more about introverted uh, perspective and also a very much um, subjective one. I was, I was going to say, I think that when when we have a bundle or cluster or whatever you want to call it, it's um, I think it's always subjective in some way, even though mine yeah. is like on top. I, yeah. I think that there's a lot of subjectivity um, because oh, yes. of this concentration. That's what I put down here, highly subjective with strong personal yeah. point of view. <laughs> and so that's a, very, that's a very defined way, like like when people love you, they will love you like because they see that much, they see your concentrated energy in that part of, of your chart. May I know what are the signs that's, that, that's your bundle? Scorpio, Sagittarius Scorpio. and Capricorn. Is it these three signs? Yeah, yeah Scorpio. Yeah, so that's people who actually identify with those three signs will actually naturally be so glued to you because you, you embody so much of those energies within yourself. Yeah. And I've also put, um, oh, that in terms of relating, it may be a bit harder for someone with a bundle shape. <laughs> yeah, because they're so into their ways. It depends. <laughs> Although I must say- Of course, say bundle, of course, it depends. Uh, if, if, the, if the bundle, as in your case, is everything is above the ascendant descendant line, you still be sensitive to public opinion, but if someone who has a bundle who is like below the ascendant descendant line, then it can really make someone um, very much of an introvert. Yeah. But still, they would they would when they let somebody in, they would be very I think very caring and very mm, like. Oh yes, that that doesn't that doesn't mean that you know like someone with a a bundle chart will be doomed for relationships, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just that it's a very specific way in which they know not far from connecting with someone that do they like this person or not? <laughs> it's very easy to kind of classify like, you know, where you stand with a bundle shaped person. It doesn't take that long, you know what I mean? And um, 
but when some someone has the bowl shape chart pattern that's underneath the horizon, um, there'll be an increased tendency to have a somewhat lack of confidence in most situations. And um, he or she may only stay concerned with private affairs. What's happening in the world, they may just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to hide in my house and that's about it. <laughs> you know? Um, and all that. And I've also put um, down here, what are the celebrities with this uh, bundle or cluster chart shape? like yourself, which are Scarlett Johansson, Sylvester Stallone, Paul McCartney, and George W. Bush. And for the example, I've actually pulled up Paul McCartney's chart and see what, and, and kind of tell the audience um, whether does his chart fit the bundle or cluster chart shape. For his chart, is a bit of a deviation because um, from the first planet to the last planet, the boundary planets, that is, uh, they are actually 128 degrees apart to be exact. And we've actually defined earlier that it needs to be around 120 degrees as the, mm -hmm. as well the condition, but I still consider his chart <laughs> as a bundle and cluster. Um, and the boundary planets right here are the two musical planets, which are Venus and Neptune. Neptune being conjunct um, his ascendant. One thing I picked up regarding his chart is that um, he's, I can see from his chart, he's a very emotional person <laughs> because of that Jupiter and Neptune square. If I were to allow a wider op, is all, Neptune is also squaring his sun. On one hand, he, he can be very uh, intuitive and imaginative. I think that's very much uh, important to be writing music <laughs> as a musician. <laughs> but then um, when something is squaring Neptune, there can be an overreaction to things. <laughs> and it can be overwhelming psychically for the person. So there's that. And the last uh, chart shape that I'm going to present for my part is display or tripod chart shape in which um, this one is more unique. Um, because there are certain areas of specialization. When you see the diagram over here, this will uh, somehow define a very close to perfect splay or tripod chart shape in which there'll be at least um, two, but usually three pairs of conjunction. I call them clumps of planets um, that are distributed um, Random, randomly, but in no more than four of the zodiac houses, preferably, but it can deviate. And usually when we talk about a splay chart, there's, there's, well, ideally between each cluster, because there's usually three clusters, ideally they are 60 degrees apart between them or more. And there are certain aspect patterns that comes with a splay or tripod chart shape. And the most obvious one will be a grand trine because there'll be three, um, three groups of planets that's roughly, um, that's space apart. But having said that, I've also seen T squares uh, in which there's there's, a, there's an opposition and two squares forming within a splay or tripod chart shape as well. And if among the three groups, one of the groups that's only like a single planet there, this can actually tell me what, uh, what's the real talent of that person. Because that single planet that forms those chart shapes will will lead the other planet, so to speak. And I've actually put here that the splay is the most common, but yet is the least clearly defined chart shape because of this uneven distribution of planets around the whole chart. And if I were to talk about the keywords and phrases 
for uh, for this chart shape. It really shows someone who is potentially multifaceted and talented because of the clusters or clumps of planets that's um, all around the chart. But there's also like a I call that the Uranian energy or Aquarian energy for someone that has a split or tripod shape because they are naturally very individualistic and they are also non-conformist by nature. And with that, um, there's a scorpionic part that comes along with that because I've also seen that split and tripod chart shapes usually contain, um, it may also contain stelliums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there's an intensity and obsessive energy that may that may be present in their character. And I think the main phrase that comes to mind is focused diversity. <laughs> they are focused. Diversity. They are focused because they are clumps of planets, but then they are also diverse at the same time because it's spread apart. And so and so the two words are actually kind of contradictory in a way yeah. that the person may or may not see the interconnectedness between um, all three things or more. They learn a whole bunch of stuff, but they just don't know how to connect the pieces together. And would, would you say that the, um, these people usually have more than one uh, profession? It can be, or or that they are so interested in picking up so many interests and passions that they are just lost in the end. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be the the um, lower vibration of this yeah. expression. I have also seen someone with this chart sheet who's a very very good entrepreneur as well because they it goes back to the individualistic and non-conformist nature, and I've also put here the disdain for routine and regiment. Yeah, it's very prevalent in a split or tripod chart shape that they prefer to be their own boss. But however, in order to materialize that, they can't seem to put the pieces together, like the different skill set that they that they focus their passions on. Um, but then when they do, they are so powerful as well. And so it's really for them to kind of get their act together <laughs> and make the most out of their true potential um, and try to connect along the way, whether is there a tangible end equation or end result that they're aiming for and not just kind of like disperse, you know what I mean? Everything yeah. out and have all these passions. It's a very Gemini energy as well. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> um, that they develop all these skills and, and, and in the end, they are just lost. <laughs> yeah. And the one chart that I picked out as an example in this case will be ZZ Zane, CC Zane, sorry, or Albert Benjamin. He's actually um, the author of the Church of Light Lessons in Astrology, Tarot, and other esoteric subjects as well. And he actually, actually his work provided a foundation for astrological education in the US for several decades. So if we widen the, um, the requirements for a trine aspect, he actually has a grand trine going on for him, which is moon. Uh, if we allow 10 degree as a, to be considered as a trine, he also... He has a moon and Uranus trine, and both are trining towards Neptune and also Saturn. So he has a grand trine going on, but that's if we widen our orbs. I think I think we, we can widen the orbs because it is the moon. So with, with yeah. the sun and the moon, we can always uh, use the biggest orbs. Yeah. Some people even use um, 12 degrees mm. for any aspects with the sun and the moon. So I think it's fine. So we have a very wide grand trine with the moon included, but then we also have a T-square. 
with uh, opposition of uh, Jupiter and Mercury, Mars, and the Sun, actually, all squaring Uranus, so that Uranus on the Midhaven is so prominent. And Uranus, one of the things is astrology. <laughs> and I also provide vocational uh, readings um, on Astrolada as well. And one of the planets I really look at for someone who's suited to do like a helping or a healing work is actually Uranus. Because what is within Uranus that suits a healing and um, a, he a, 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 a healing and social, what do you call that? A healing and helping profession. Because if you think about Uranus, it's about progressing humanity forward. And so this is what uh, I reckon, um, if someone is planning to go into that field, I, I usually look at how strong their Uranus is in their chart. And here so from, we have Uranus in, in Virgo, correct? Yes. So it's even more permanent to, yes. to see and it's, that. And it's very close to conjunct the Midhaven, which is what he's known for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and also, uh, the, also the nice aspect from from Neptune, who who also, who also helps uh, with the energy of healing and all the esoteric uh, good others. stuff. Yeah, all the esoteric good stuff, and really tapping into the invisible realm to like supercharge um, our consciousness and lead humanity forward uh, to have more compassion. Neptune as well. And Uranus and Neptune are also both occult-related planets. Yeah. Yeah, because they deal naturally with... Uh, there's a 12th house, and 12th house energy naturally connected to Neptune. But then um, Uranus really is about connecting with the sky gods <laughs> as yeah, well. As, as, as I like to call them, the out-of-this-world uh, out planets. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. And so you can see how it plays out in this, uh, in this person's life. And he is very instrumental in bringing forth like esoteric subjects, astrology and tarot, just to name a few. So with this, um, I shall pass it over to Radostina. <laughs> Thank you. This was um, a really interesting uh, information that you provided us with. And I, I will share my, my share of the aspects. <laughs> uh, I hope everybody can see. I'm not um, oh, yeah. quite sure. But there we go. We are going to talk about the bucket, the seesaw, and the locomotive. I'm excited uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> One of these three is my chart sheet. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, we have somehow uh, distributed the the shape so that you can talk about my type of chart, and I'll All be right. talking about your part of chart. <laughs> and then we are going to also see that um, the it's a very it's sometimes very hard to um, distinguish one mm. type from another, especially when talking about the ball and the locomotive, for example. Um, even though this is very easy to see and to distinguish because the ball would be stopping here, these wouldn't be um, included. They would be on this side because we have this opposition here. But uh, in reality, uh, our charts are so different. And so um, like the planets are not always perfectly aligned, of course. Yeah. Uh, for the certain uh, pattern, of course, they're perfectly aligned for our lives. So we're going to look at um, some variations and some things that may be uh, hard to, to distinguish, but still they are, these are part of the seven um, patterns that we are going to be covering today. These are the ones that I'm going to cover. And then we have the splash um, at the end that we're going to talk about Time in together. together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So the first one is the bucket. And the bucket um, is, um, as we can see, um, all of the planets are in one half of the chart. And there is only one, or the so-called singleton, or the handle of the bucket that is uh, on the other half of the chart. And it's basically the apex or the focused planet or the planet that is um, holding everything together <laughs> for a person with a bucket chart. Um, usually we have um, the, the handle is always uh, the one that we are talking about. It's always the one that is playing the uh, main part of uh, the person's life. And sometimes it can be quite hard to live with uh, such chart because um, this can be a challenging, um, a challenging thing to to live by because um, it feels, um, as I said, it's called the singleton. So it means that it's almost like only... everything is like zoom in on that. Yeah, singleton it's like handle, everybody's yeah. relying on this planet. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of the planets the are rest. like you. Yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to be. You have to be our like main character, you have to be our leader. Um, and uh, this can also indicate uh, some sort of a complex, uh, some sort of um, insecurity, especially before the person's 30th, like before the Saturn return, it can be quite a struggle to uh, express this or to have it balanced or to live it in the best way possible. Uh, but then again, uh, if uh, the person with such chart can um, grow and can understand himself or herself and um, work towards balancing out the energies, uh, he can also become a spe specialist in, in, in the area that this handle is occupying in the chart. Right. Um, it, it's, it's the dominant planet, so it's really important to take a look at which house it is in, which sign it is in. And I also um, also use the ruler of this planet to, to check the situation there because it gives us extra information about uh, how we can handle this handle. <laughs> I always um, think of the bucket as a bowl with a handle. Yeah. Well, it, it is, it is yeah. really. Um, so maybe uh, saying that, uh, we can also take a look at the two planets that are forming the, the ball part of the chart mm -hmm. and see what might be the, um, another struggle, like the last planet before the handle is also something that can be um, bringing some challenges in our life. And maybe we can use this first planet. Again, we are looking at the planets on clockwise. So uh, we can use the first planet to help us with uh, integrating the handle and making the best of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I have, um, I have Will Smith here. Of course, uh, this is the ideal <laughs> bucket and I have taken out his uh, chart from AstroSeek and from Astro.com um, for some reason in AstroSeek they have um, Leo Rising wrong... okay. yeah they made the wrong time I mean they okay. put the wrong time in his chart but uh, it's very nice how they how they indicate the shape um, so he has Saturn in the 12th house with the correct time in astral home. And uh, we can also see that part of this chart is uh, very often the yod or the, what is it called? We are the yod, yeah. Sorry. A sextile um, with two in conjuncts. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, it's called the finger of God or something like that. Finger as of well. God. Uh, so it's, as we mentioned before, it just points right to the apex, right, to the um, to the top of the bucket. And in the 12th house, of course, 12th house is, has to do with music, has to do with uh, movie making. So it's a very, um, like, it's no surprise that um, his handle is in the sphere of uh, 
these topics that he is known for. Um, and his, his chart is quite like uh, wish together bundled yeah, yeah bundled <laughs> and squished <laughs> so uh, that's why i used it because uh, you don't you see that originally we can have a bigger spread like we, mm. we can have the planets yeah. wider spread but um, this is also called the bundle uh, sorry not the bundle but uh, bucket a bucket uh, i think yeah. that's a variation of the of the bucket that's called a fan you know, a fan. Yeah, yeah. So it's even more narrow. I think that's what he has. But, you know, just know that um, there's, a, j there's just a single planet just, you know, away from the rest. Yeah. You know, that Mars is ruled by Mercury, which is in Libra. So that's why he's, he's doing what he does, like saying he raps, he's in movies, you know, is the like the artist and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he definitely has a very artistic nature, in, mm. especially with the moon conjunct, by, uh, conjunct Neptune and um, star. all <laughs> these planets, yeah, all these planets in the fifth house. Um, entertainment, sure. yeah. yeah, entertainment, entertainment. industry. Entertainment and Interesting. Um, Maybe for him, it's really like develop a stronger sense of spirituality as he grows older that might be fulfilling his... Uh, handle planet which is Saturn in the 12th house I don't know is is he directing movies because I'm thinking about for him being a director um, or even having his uh, producing company being I a... think he does he he did produce a few a few films mm -hmm. well. yeah because planets in the 12th house can also be actively used in vocation as well Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, um, Saturn uh, Saturn is uh, one of the indications uh, for where we have to become masters of wherever mm -hmm. it is. And it can also indicate that when he was younger, he might not have been so confident, um, especially because, uh, and so driven because of Saturn being in uh, the first sign, uh, being in... Aries, uh, which is uh, in fall, which has to do with right. yeah, with being proud of who you are, not worrying about what you're doing and acting on your impulses. Um, so he maybe hasn't been so um, outspoken, so confident, and growing up, he, he went through all of these insecurities. And as he gets older, the leadership comes along with that, with lessons. Yeah. yeah along the way. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the CISO. Of course, it's a very, uh, very Libra-like yes. uh, pattern, uh, as we can imagine, because uh, it's uh, going from one side to the other. We have... Uh, planets on mm, clustered in one side of the chart and then in opposition there's always there has to be at least one opposition um, for for this type of chart and usually it's uh, easy to see because uh, they're just uh, opposing planets from both sides of a chart and um, it's usually a rare pattern not very we don't see it very often and um, there have to be at least 60 um, degrees gap between the two clusters. Um, but I would say maybe 90 is ideal mm -hmm. because with 60, we go to um, another type of chart and it, it can, we can get confused with, for example, the display or we can get confused with the splash. So the more, the better. Mm -hmm. When there is a gap, um, how many seesaw defined seesaw charts have you read before in your astrological career? I think so far I've read only less than three, if I recall. <laughs> I I I haven't really counted them to be honest. But as I said, it's a it's a rare um, pattern. 
it's not uh, easy to find the same as the bundle, even though I think I've seen a lot of bundles, to be okay. honest. Very what interesting relationship stories. She asked us he saw a chart shape person. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with the with the CISO, there is this um, um, insecurity, or mm. there is always balance. Uh, this person can be either very uh, like unstable, or mm. always finding the uh, middle ground with uh, anybody who who he is in a conflict, or with himself, or um, just being a great communicator and great uh, medium person. So uh, a very way. good mediator, but then also they may flip-flop a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indecisive all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Uh, It depends on what they've done, but even though with their lives, I mean, uh, even though uh, one doesn't exclude the other, I mean, they can be really good at, uh, for example, if they're lawyers, they can be great lawyers, or they can be great counselors uh, mm. in some way, or even um, wedding agents, all the all the Libra um, professions, I think are good for the CISO people. Right. Um, but they can be great business uh, people. Uh, but in certain areas of their life, they might be very insecure. They might be flip-flopping, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, inner tension as well because they're trying to balance two polar opposites. Yeah, and sometimes they, yeah. they just feel like they're distracted from concentrating on finding mm -hmm. the balance instead yeah. of actually doing things and uh, living their life freely. Right. So it can be um, it can be a challenging aspect mm. to live with, um, and because of these oppositions, uh, they might be sometimes they might just decide that they had enough of trying to balance everything out. So they find a partner who can help them and work from one side of their chart, like. Um, if they decide to work with this side of the chart, they attract people who are the polar opposite, mm -hmm. so they can balance out the uh, the planets that they can't. Um, In other words, they just with. hang on to one side and let the other one carry the other side. Yeah, sometimes uh, that can happen too. Right. Uh, somebody who has a seesaw is okay. Whitney, <laughs> Whitney Houston. Um, well, it's again uh, very helpful to see the planets this way, so um, we can actually see the sea. So, uh, but the the chart that you would usually see um, it looks like this with all the aspects, and this is why again we say that it's not easy to determine the mm -hmm. um, the patterns. Um, and of course, she's she's uh, a very good example of uh, the Aries Libra yeah. <laughs> so, mm, pattern, because um, the planets uh, that are part of the pattern are on basically on more mostly on the side of the seventh house, and there are a couple that are. Um, in the first house, even though we are using Placidus here. So um, it's a it's a hard it's a hard thing to to balance out because of Saturn being in the twelfth house. But again Saturn in the twelfth house uh, and she is in the uh, music and entertainment business mm -hmm. with her uh, beautiful son in Leo. Um, and there is some of course, the, the tragedy uh, that happened to her and how she died is, uh, I think it shows the way that when, when you cannot find the balance and you get really, really tired and you, uh, you end up... Uh, Self-destruct, that's the thing. Yeah, self destruction. What I find really interesting is that for Whitney's chart, like on one side you have the Saturn, which has an opposition to Sun and Venus. 
Mm-hmm. And then you got the other tip of the bundle, you know, um, in Aries, which is Moon and Jupiter opposing Mars. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of defines like the seesaw shape. And the only thing that sticks yeah. out to me like a sore thumb is Neptune. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that Neptune, and yeah. Neptune really is the, um, even though I wouldn't say that he is the main <clears throat> player in his life, um, but again, uh, her career is Neptunian, Yes. Uh, the way she died is Neptunian, the reason she died is Neptunian, so it's, oh, I don't know whether you know, she... And then oh, Neptune is the, is the tip of the T-square with like Saturn and uh sun and venus so it is very interesting that all those neptunian things because when i see a seesaw shape and there's like a planet dangling outside of a seesaw that planet becomes very important and high focused yeah and uh, Uh, there's a lot of pressure here because of uh, the aspects from saturn and he is uh, himself in a neptunian house where he actually uh, according to planetary joy yeah yeah, he's fine there in the 12th house, but still in a square to Neptune and opposing mm. Venus and Sun, it's not an easy way to live. Uh, well, Saturn so, and Neptune are not good friends, right? By relation, planetary yeah. relationships. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is rough. But anyways, like you can see how like a planet that's lying outside the main shape can have so much significance and symbolic, like it, ma- it just kind of keep manifesting in her life, all the things that she's known for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Neptune is also the only planet that's in a water sign in her chart. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So yeah. again, it makes it, it makes it a singleton. So it makes it... In again, many ways, it yeah. It makes it difficult. It's like a sore thumb. <laughs> mm. yeah. Oh well, <laughs> there we go. All right. Locomotive, your your type of um, chart. Oh, that's my chart shape, yeah. <laughs> that's your chart shape, yeah. Locomotive is um, it's it's similar to the ball again, but uh, we have we have a uh, bigger up. spread. <laughs> Sorry. It's the ball plus one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we have all the planets in the uh, in 240 degrees spread and um, usually they are four empty either uh, actually four empty signs mm. um, so this is how we can recognize uh, this locomotive chart and again this is the leading planet or the locomotive and this is the train and that's the last coach and again this is the planet that's suffering and uh, or the the person is suffering with the planet at the end uh and this is the one who is uh, dragging all the rest of the Mm -hmm. planets and the the whole energy is concentrated there and has the strongest uh, impact so it's great if uh, a person who has a locomotive chart Uh, has the first planet well uh, situated like um, in a um, sign that it rules or in a sign of exaltation, that would be the best. Um, So it has a strong energy, it has strong energy to to manage all the rest. Um, This is a chart of a person who is very driven and um, it, it, it shows that um, they have a mission in life. They they know how to they they know what they want and they know how to get there, and there's nothing stopping them from um, chasing their dreams, basically. Mm-hmm. So, another thing that is um, helpful for such person and it's like a key uh, to their success is the midpoint of uh, these hundred and um, uh, sorry uh, it's the midpoint of the 240 degrees which comes in opposition uh, and it's like the hinge of the pattern right the the door hinge is like 
yeah. you have the tip of the train, which is the leading planet. And then if there's a planet opposing that midpoint of the empty trine, it really has the push. <laughs> yeah, or it, of course there wouldn't be a planet there, but the, the point that's opposing is um, super important and it works like a handle maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, if we take it from the book, uh, from the bucket pattern, mm -hmm. uh, but in a more, I think, in a more positive way, because uh, we have a very driven person, as I said here, and they will, if there's anything else in the chart that can help them, they will use it at their best. Uh, it wouldn't, they wouldn't struggle, I would say. Um, and again, they have to they have to work on the last on the last planet because this can be something that they um, maybe they neglect in some way because just subconsciously they feel like this is the last thing that they have to worry about <laughs> or they never they never find uh, they never find time uh, to to work with it and sometimes it can be. Um, in a difficult aspect that requires mm. flexibility uh, and because of their uh, ideas and energy that's focused on chasing their dreams and, aim and aims, mm, they might forget about this or don't want to be bothered with being flexible about right. one thing when they have another <laughs> eight. <laughs> Um, and an example is Isaac Newton, uh, who is a who is a scientist. Uh, of course, um, he he is a person of uh, many faces, I would say. But he's always been into um, different inventions and making the world better and again because here for example uh, Uranus is uh, and I would say this is his first planet mm, and Uranus is the basically the first the locomotive the planet that drives his inventions and um, makes him work on getting the humanity to better times and that's why he has so he has made the humanity progress mm, and of course <laughs> having uranus uh, as a driving planet makes the emotions the last <laughs> thing that we can <laughs> worry about even though his moon is uh, very well situated in cancer and mm, he he always does things to care about the population let's right. say if we take a look to, at the to moon benefit as, the public yeah yeah if we take yeah. a look at the moon as the public so that's um, that's another example of uh, a uranian person who has brought um enlightenment to the humanity through his inventions and theories right which is very uranian theories yeah. and Theoretical. And he was also he was also um, into esoteric topics and spirituality as well. And the last the last shape is the splash. Well, yeah. As you see, it's uh, <laughs> it's basically planets everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have um, in the ideal in the ideal part of uh, having a splash it means that we have a planet in almost every sign because we have 10 planets 12 signs so maybe two signs are empty and the rest are um, occupied by a different planet but it doesn't always work like that and it's not that easy <laughs> even though i have i have seen even for my students um there a lot of people who have the splash pattern and 
it's actually not uh, not a unique one. Uh, mm. We can often find a splash. And the distribution is even, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, I have chosen one that at first I wouldn't say it's a splash, uh, maybe more of a splay. Um, and we're going, I'm just going to show you in a moment, just wanted to mention as well that uh, these people are um, very intelligent and they're very curious, but they can also be very scattered. And they might be, um, they might find it hard to concentrate on one thing and they might find it hard to uh, be masters of one thing. And that's why I have put here in my um, like thumbnails that it's like, sorry, bullet points, not thumbnails. <laughs> That they can be uh, something like jack of all trades and master yeah. of none. Master of none. <laughs> uh, and uh, the hardest thing for them also can be to find their center and to find to understand themselves and to uh, be composed and just concentrate on on the the important things. Uh, but other than that, they're very independent and they're very Surely they're very friendly and they're people who um, know a lot and can communicate pretty well with uh, almost anybody on any topic. So it's a um, very Gemini-like, I think, the energy of people. I would, I, I would think like Aquarius <laughs> because it's almost like when someone has a splash chart ship, it's like usually there's only one planet in one sign or one house. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, and it's like so true. so you know so the open mm -hmm. so the open mindedness I think comes from there as well. Hence, they are yeah. so adaptable in terms of like, oh, I know this. Oh, I also know this. I also know this. You know, just like a little bit, a little bit to start that conversation, like a HR manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. You Absolutely. Know. Um, and here we have Young who was uh, who was given as an example and mm -hmm. i just i just find it interesting that his chart is uh, i wouldn't personally call it a splash but still uh in uh, a lot of uh, the data that i have uh, been going through they give it as an example of splash uh, and that's why I chose it, so I can uh, show that there are different types of splash. Mm. It's it somehow um, reminds me of actually of Whitney Houston's uh, seesaw, uh, okay. and this yeah. planet One on thing the side. Out. <laughs> yeah, sticking out. But on the other hand, it's quite far from. Uh, from the rest of the planet. So we wouldn't say it's a seesaw, really. Yeah. So in other words, what Radostina is trying to say is that when you see a chart, the first impression can link you to one chart shape, but then you need to look at what actually defines that chart shape to kind of come to the conclusion. It may be a hybrid chart shape for all, you know. It, it can also happen that way as well. It can be two chart shapes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be, there might be uh, in in one um, horoscope, there might be a few chart shapes. Actually, mm. um, yes, there can be um, one of these seven, uh, and then there are some additional ones like the kite, like um, yeah. the fan that you have mentioned. Uh, all sorts. I mean, there are so many <laughs> shapes <laughs> that we can. There's the mystic uh, rectangle, the, the envelope, <laughs> and all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe it's also good to know that um, you shouldn't worry about not knowing the shapes because the information that you get from the shapes is information that you can find without knowing much about shapes. So um, mm -hmm. everything in astrology can be found 
um, from many aspects and from many in, in many ways. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to mention about uh, Jung is that, um, as I said, the splash can be a scattered person that cannot find the center uh, of uh, himself. And um, it's very interesting that he has such, uh, such shape because he's actually uh, trying to find the, the center of the person and also understanding how complex the personality is and how it can go into many different um, directions. Mm -hmm. And he was also a big fan of um, astrology and he was using astrology in his works. I think one main thing that I can think of is because that even though all the planets are somewhat scattered, but then they are linked via uh, aspect patterns. <laughs> yeah. Like you, like on the top left, we've got like minor grand trine, which is a trine, a trine with two sextiles. Uh, uh -huh. And then you've got a T-square somewhere. Yeah, and then between you, Uranus, you, Saturn and the moon. You even have a yacht here. going on. <laughs> <laughs> like all those things just play into it and um i think if i widen the orb a little bit he actually has oh this this uh aspect uh pattern called a cradle oh yeah a cradle if i widen the orb between uranus and and jupiter it actually forms like a cradle yeah. like mm -hmm. so if it's the baby in you know <laughs> <laughs> and all that so a splash just means that someone who's very multi, so diverse in interest. And I think it's because of those aspect patterns that he somehow find a way to kind of merge everything into his, what, Youngen therapy, was it? Yeah. It was called. And, you know, all the, all the schools that he's helped to set up and all that. It's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's super interesting to look at different, uh, to different, charts and patterns and then to to find how all is connected and how one leads to the other and then uh, there are so many points that we can take a look at and uh, they can confirm what we have already said about the pattern yeah and i think the last few things i wrote for a splash chart ship is somewhat someone who's very dexterous highly adaptable yeah well-rounded because of how wide of a spread the yeah. planets are. Someone who wants to do it all. <laughs> and they, they uh, usually, if, uh, if they uh, give themselves enough time, they can actually uh, do it all. They can actually do mm. it all. <laughs> and also, last two words, is very worldly because they can just connect to a whole broad audience yeah. And last but not least, charismatic. I've charismatic, absolutely. Yeah. Very charismatic. They are very charismatic, but at the same time, they are very self-sufficient. Very yeah. self-sufficient. Because they're they so interested everything. in so many. Yeah, they're so interested <laughs> in so many times and in so many things that they cannot. Um, they cannot get bored. So even though the splash, we initially define it as some someone who can be scattered, you know, scattered and lack of focus or all that. But when it's somewhat knit into like a whole bunch of aspect patterns, it can actually uh, bring some tangible manifestation like he, what he did with his life and his contributions to the world. Yep. Well, that was very interesting. Yeah. I hope that uh, <laughs> our viewers think the same. <laughs> well, also, you may apply the chart shapes we discussed in your solar return chart also. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this not only applies to NATO. I just want to let the audience know that like, when you see a very distinct solar return chart that has a certain shape, you can apply like things that we discussed in this video and you can see where... Um, you know, for the solar year, where your uh, energy will be focused in and how you can utilize it to the best of your ability. Oh, so if uh, you have a um, chart shape uh, with a, like with an apex planet, 
uh, you can take a look at, at the solar return or um, like even in progressions, if it's one of mm. the um, ones that are moving faster yeah. uh, and see what's happening there and if it will be active. Also, it's very interesting to look at the ears when um, this um, focused planet was uh, the ruler of your uh, perfection year. Mm. So it in, we can use uh, we can use these in many ways. Yeah, and chart shapes That's usually information. Chart shapes are usually the macro picture of what it can bring, but then they've got so many like when you like it's almost like chart shape is the um it's really the super broad base view of the year. And then you zoom it into the little, little things. And then they will kind of paint for you, like kind of add, you, add, the, uh, add the fillings to your burger. The chart shape is like the bun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the you chart shape is just the bun. <laughs> yeah, the chart shape is, is the bun only. So you got to fill in like the, you know, the good stuff with like uh, looking more in depth into stuff to, to bring it flavor. Yeah. 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 Well, it was pleasure meeting you. And it's been a, a while. <laughs> yeah. We should we should get together again soon. Yeah, we should. So okay, um, I think that, that's that's all we have to present for uh, for chart shapes. And let us know in the comments if uh, there's any topics that you would like us to cover next. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Bye.